Hello and thanks for joining us for a late night newscast coming to you from Adi Lang's news centre in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story tonight. The Korean government has condemned a Japanese newspaper for publishing a report saying Korea might consider moving a meaningful and highly symbolic statue related to their shared history. The report comes ahead of talks between the foreign ministers of Korea and Japan on Monday. Seoul says nothing has been decided in regards to that meeting. Hwang Jie starts us off. Seoul's foreign ministry blasted a report by Japan's biggest newspaper, Yomiuri Shimbun, on Saturday that said Korea is considering whether to move a statue honoring the victims of Japan's wartime sexual enslavement of Korean women. The ministry said media reports coming out of Japan are preposterous and prompts questions about Japan's sincerity over a meeting between their top diplomats. Korea's Foreign Minister Yoon Byung-hae and his Japanese counterpart Fumio Kishida will meet on Monday to hold talks on wartime sexual slavery. Seoul added that nothing has been decided about the talks and that it strongly urged the Japanese ambassador to prevent such events from happening again. The latest row is darkening the outlook for the meeting that had raised hopes for a breakthrough on the comfort woman issue that hampered Korea-Japan ties for years. Installed in 2011, the statue of a girl in Korean dress has been facing the Japanese embassy for around four years. Citing sources within the Korean government, the Japanese paper said the relocation of the statue could happen if Tokyo agrees to conditions deemed acceptable to Seoul to settle the long-standing dispute during the ministerial talks. It went on to say that if progress is made, Korea will attempt to convince civic groups to move the statue to a memorial park near Mount Namsan in central Seoul. Following the report, a Korean civic group representing the victims slammed the idea of relocating the statue, saying if the report turns out to be true, it will spur major division within the country. It added the Japanese ambassador to Korea should visit the statue to commemorate it and make an official government-level apology for Japan's wartime atrocities. About 200,000 women, mainly from Korea, were forced into sexual enslavement by Japan's military before and during World War II. Hwang Jie, Arirang News. Now, in political news, the floor leaders of Korea's ruling and main opposition parties have started talks aimed at reaching common ground so lawmakers can pass a slew of pending bills by the end of the year. The, the rival parties aim to narrow their differences on labor reform bills, bills to improve the nation's business environment, and more. Ruling Senate Party floor leader Won Yu Chol said he hopes the 19th National Assembly wraps up this year with the passage of economy related bills deemed crucial as Korea is facing uncertainties like the recent U.S. rate hike and plunging global oil prices. Floor leader of the main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy, Lee Jong-gol, however, he blamed the ruling party for the delayed passage, saying the party is making zero concessions. Five big banks in Korea plan to close more than 100 branches next year as more consumers are doing their banking online. Sources in the industry say Korea's second biggest bank, Uri Bank, is planning to close up to 40, 40 of its 958 uh, branches across the country in 2016. NH Nonghyop Bank is preparing to shut 20 next year but opened 10 new branches in new locations. The nation's biggest lender, KB Gungmin Bank, plans to close 23 branches next year due to unprofitability. Shinhan and KEB Hana Bank will also close an undisclosed number of branches for the same reason. In international news, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has made a surprise stop over in Pakistan on his way home from Russia. It was the first visit by an Indian leader to Pakistan in almost 12 years. Pakistan's Foreign Secretary told media in Lahore that Modi and Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif had met in a pleasant atmosphere. He added that both leaders were keen to build a peaceful relationship going forward. Now, tensions between India and Pakistan, who have fought three wars over the last 60 years, have threatened peace in South Asia. India has been upset with Pakistan for what it argues is support for Taliban leaders in Afghanistan. The two countries also have long-standing tensions over Kashmir. 
One of the most senior rebels in Syria has been killed on the outskirts of Damascus in what activists said was a Russian airstrike. Zaran Alush is the most prominent rebel leader to have been killed since the start of Russian airstrikes in Syria. Syrian state media confirmed the 44-year-old plus five of his commanders were killed during a raid on the group's secret headquarters in the city's eastern suburbs. Now, if you've ever been to the mountains in Busan or on Jeju Island, you may have walked past some of uh, pieces of the Earth's environmental history. Now, many of these natural formations are housed in Korea's so-called geoparks with over 100 geological sites in six regions around the country. Park Se-young has the details. This Gabor Rock was designated as Korea's 267th natural monument in 1980. It was the first Gabor Rock discovered in Asia and is located on Mount Hwangyeong in Busan. Gabor Rocks are normally difficult to spot, but this one's round shape makes it unique. It was created when magma slowly solidified in the Earth's lower crust 85 million years ago. These are just some of the natural treasures held by Korea's national geoparks created to preserve the country's geological heritage. The cliffs at Igide, another geopark in Busan, were created by volcanic activity 70 million years ago and were carved into their present shape by waves. The park also contains the sea cave, which was originally underwater but became visible when the land rose, and these potholes once mistaken for dinosaur footprints. Korea designated its first geopark in 2012, and now there are six around the country, with a seventh one pending designation. The geopark system aims to educate and provide tour destinations, offering a picture of the Earth's history. Koreans became familiar with the concept of geoparks when geological sites on Jeju Island received recognition as UNESCO Global Geoparks back in 2010. Park Se-young, Arirang News. Now, being alone during the holiday season can be tough, especially if you don't have your family or friends around. But if you happen to be in Seoul between this month and mid-January, there is a special event that invites you to party with some robots. Uh, Won Jian has a story. Here's a bartender that will mix you the perfect drink. And this little guy full of cool tricks could become your favorite drinking buddy. The robot seems to be in a good mood since it keeps on dancing. I think this robot will help me cheer up on bad days. And if you want to relax watching a good film, simply ask this teddy bear robot. Show me a movie. You can meet all of these robot friends and more at the robot party down at the Art Center Nabi Museum in Seoul. This convergence festival offers people a chance to build an emotional connection with artificial intelligence. The event features more than 50 different robots made by international creators from various fields. The event gave us an opportunity to freely create whatever we could think of. Rather than the robot's anatomy on the inside, we focus more on its looks on the outside and the way it interacts with people. The robot party will stay open to public from 1 to 8 p.m. on weekdays until January 16th. Won ji Arirang News. Now, intense heat is fueling an epidemic of wildfires in Australia, with nearly every part of that country affected. A wave of wildfires in the south of the country has shut down the main road connecting Melbourne and Sydney. The fires have raced across arid grasslands, destroying over 100 homes and leaving thousands more without power. Australia is in the grips of a record heat wave at the moment, with the mercury reaching 40 degrees Celsius in some parts. Australian officials say lightning combined with bone-dry conditions and gusty winds sparked hundreds of wildfires in the state of Victoria on Saturday alone. Now, Beijing is getting some highly anticipated relief from the severe smog that has blanketed the Chinese capital for days now. The bad news, though, for the uh, city's residents is that the smog will be back and as bad as before from Monday. It's expected to linger until the end of the year as well. Now, Beijing had a toxic smog version of a white Christmas on Friday. You can see the state of the air conditioning there, but uh, the U.S. Embassy in the city said counts of PM 2.5, which are those 
tiny microscopic particles that get deep into your lungs and are deeply unhealthy. They actually peaked at 620 micrograms per cubic meter in Beijing on Christmas Day. The World Health Organization says the safe level is 25 micrograms, so Beijing was almost 25 times higher than the safe point. And finally, we're going to leave you with a brief look at the weather. And it's uh, a very, 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 very cold night across Korea's central region right now. In Seoul, the mercury is going to drop to minus 10 degrees Celsius overnight. So if you are heading out, you will need a very thick coat. Sunday is going to be cold as well, but uh, clear and sunny, so it'll be pretty nice. The high in the capital tomorrow is not forecast to breach the freezing point. In fact, the daytime high will be minus 2 degrees Celsius. With that, let's take a look at the weather around the world. Well, those are the stories we have for you at this hour. For more of the latest, don't forget to check out the website, adianang.com forward slash news. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Goodbye.